Fire already? Yeah. Hit. Yay! Hello and welcome to an update here from us at the Cold Ball Range. These updates are meant to you shooters who visit our range so that you can optimize your shooting when you're here. Today we're going to talk about one of the things that you can always do when you're at the Cold Ball Range to check your rifle setup. It's probably one of the most important things you can do at our range, but one of the least used things that shooters actually do at our range. We hope to change this so that you will have full control of your rifle setup and therefore will be more consistent. Because as you all know, consistency is accuracy. We are of course talking about the tall target test, which is one of the three most important things you can do to improve your hint percentage on the range. And even more importantly, it can help you preventing putting bad data into your ballistics calculator and as a consequence getting bad data out. Or like we like to call it, shit in, shit out. Now, there's a few ways to do the tall target test, and one of them is by live fire and shoot groups and use the point of impact for your test. Another way, and that is what we have at the Cobra range, is to set your scope on a scope mount and make sure that it's horizontally leveled, and also that the distance from the elevation turret to the target is 100 meters and not from the muzzle to the target. A setup error like that would already there induce perhaps a 1% error since the difference in distance from the muzzle to the elevation turret is about 1 meter. Another thing is also to be very mindful of not pressing down on the turret when doing the tall target test, but only turning the elevation turret. I almost made this mistake as you see here and I was very close to typing in a scope tracking error that actually wasn't there. The tall target test gives you two things. The first thing is that it checks your cant of your scope to see if you have leveled your scope completely vertical, and if not, just loosen the screws and adjust for the cant. Now let's look at an example where you have three degrees of unintended cant in your rifle. In this example, we have 6.4 mils of elevation for an 800 meter shot, and to use a cant rule of thumb for the point of impact shift, we have to add one mil and use that number in our equation to determine the horizontal shift of the point of impact. Uh, as you can see, it will result in a 32 centimeter horizontal shift, which is the equivalent of one meter per second of full wind for a 6.5 by 55 at that range. Now, we can also calculate the vertical shift in the point of impact. And luckily, as you see here, it is a very little shift and has no consequence to or the prediction of your point of impact. 800 meters is a good distance to true your B BC, so if you have already trued your ballistic coefficient but have not made the tall target test, the result of the truing is still valid. The second thing you test with the tall target test is to see if your scope tracking of your rifle scope is precise. So if your scope says that one click is one centimeter on 100 meters or 0.1 mil, then it sure as hell should track 200 centimeters with 200 clicks at 100 meters and not 202 or 198 clicks. Now, luckily, you do not have to buy a new rifle scope if it doesn't, because most quality ballistics apps, uh, you can enter a scope tracking sensitivity or a correction, so you still get quality data out of your ballistic calculator. And now, how did this Night Force Attacker 5-25 mil XT scope perform? For the first part of the test where I checked for Kent, you can see that it is perfectly vertical over at least 10 mils, from 2 mils over the center of the reticle and 8 mils below the center of the reticle. So luckily there is no Kent in this scope. For the second part of the test, I started as high as possible from a cross section on the tall target. And the black circles to the left are just to easily identify every 50 centimeter intervals on the tall target. And now here starting a cross section going down for the first 40 clicks or 4 mils, no scope tracking errors. And going further down here to 90 clicks or 9 mils. The small deviation here is just me pushing down on a turret and not a scope tracking error. And here at 140 clicks again, no uh, scope tracking error, just me pressing down. And as you see here, we hit 190 clicks here, and the scope is tracking perfectly. So a very nice scope uh, to do this test with. 
Now I'm done with the test, I have made a valid test and I have valid results. Now if there was any scope tracking error, I would just change the scope cor uh, correction factor in my ballistics app that I'm using and I would still have just as precise predictions to my trajectory and therefore I could now trust both my rifle setup and the predictions that my ballistic solver gives me. Solid data in, solid data out. The tall target test is one of the most important things you can do to increase your hit percentage downrange and have control of your setup. So if you haven't made the test, please do so at the Cobra range so that you can push your limits even further and break through your performance roof. Consistency is accuracy. Now, we would also like to thank two of our sponsors. The first off is Pyro Sport for the use of this high-end Night Force Attacker 5 to 25 by 56 mil XT rifle scope. It's it actually was the first mil XT model in Europe, and Pyro supported our range with it. A giant leap of faith from Pyro to us from the early beginning. Thank you very much, Pyro, and also a big thanks to our longtime sponsor, the Hunting Store Co. Osco, for among many other things, the sponsoring of the Terrapine X laser rangefinder that gives us valid range results for all shooters at the range. Thank you for watching and see you on the range.